For each case that will, there will be a public hearing, we ask that the applicant keep their presentation to under 10 minutes. They may reserve two minutes as a rebuttal. We ask that the public keep their comments to two minutes unless they have previously requested in writing for five minutes as a representative of a group or organization. Pursuant to the provision of section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that a final hearing before this commission is appealable to the Chancery Court of Davidson County or the Circuit Court of Davidson County. This a statutory writ of certiorari. You are advised to seek your own independent, independent legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements are met. You should also seek independent legal advice regarding the applicability of the writ of certiorari to the specific decision of the Historic Zoning Commission. Consent agenda. Cons items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Robin, are there any changes to our agenda for September 19? Yes, 2020 10th Avenue South has deferred. Okay. With that revision, is there a motion to accept that? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second. So we do accept the adoption of the agenda. And are there any council members here today? And see none. We will approve uh, the minutes for, was it August 15? Yes, August 15. I move for approval. Okay, there is a motion. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay and approval of minutes is, is passed. So we are now at 1512A Dallas Avenue. First consent. Oh, consent, yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the agenda was so short, I almost missed that. <laughs> yes, most of it is on consent. First, we have 3800 Princeton Avenue, it's new construction of an addition. 1503 Clayton Avenue, new construction of an addition. 604 Russell Street, signage. 2601 Oakland Avenue, new construction, addition and detached accessory dwelling unit. 2121 Blair Boulevard, new construction of an addition with a setback determination. 604 Madison Street, new construction, infill. 3530 Richland Avenue, new construction of infill with a setback determination. 1005 Paris Avenue, new construction, addition and outbuilding with a setback determination. 2503 Essex Place, new construction of an addition and outbuilding. Staff recommends approval of the items on the consent agenda with the applicable conditions, finding they meet the design guidelines of their respective overlays. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, are there any questions? Move for approval. Second, all in favor? Aye. Okay, that uh, consent agenda passes. All right. Um, 2020 10th Avenue has been removed from the agenda and has been approved uh, to be removed. Make that clear. And the only one left we have is 1512A, Dallas Avenue. All right, <clears throat> so this is an application to an enlarge and historic house at 1512 Dallas Avenue, sometimes listed as 1512A Dallas Avenue, uh, to enlarge it with a ridge raise and a rear addition. Uh, that's the front of the house, it's the left and right. The ridge raise addition will be uh, typical, like many other ridge raise additions, in that it will increase the height of the uh, ridge height of the building by extending the front slope up into the rear, uh, increasing it by a height of two feet. Um, from that new ridge, the rest of the addition will tie into that and go back with a cross gabled form. Um, so it's kind of a, a T-shaped addition. On the first story, the walls <clears throat> of the addition step in two feet from the sides of the existing house, then go back. 
uh, and then step back out to align with the sides of the house to match the width of the existing house uh, on the first story. And then similarly, the upper story uh, steps in, goes back, and then steps back out. Um, staff finds that while it may be appropriate for a one-story addition to match the width of an historic house, or in some cases to be wider, uh, after stepping in with an alcove and, and such, staff finds that the scale of the proposed addition is not appropriate because it's a two-story addition to a one-story house. Uh, while this is the case uh, for both sides, it's particularly apparent here on the left or west elevation uh, where that two-story mass has an eave height significantly taller than the eave height of the historic house. And because the addition has a ridge raise, uh, it's two feet taller than the original structure and it, it matches the width of a non-historic portion of the building. Uh, so the two-story mass is actually taller and wider than the mass of the historic building, uh, mass of the original building. Uh, so staff would find that, you know, while the, the form and footprint of the first story is appropriate, the second story should be set in within uh, the mass or, or inside the silhouette of the historic house. Uh, on, and that's the, the view where you would see uh, see that, that massing, that two-story mass uh, most significantly is uh, from this angle. Uh, it would be visible from the other angle as well, uh, but, but not as much because, uh, again, that left side is, is lined up with a, a non-original bay on the rear left corner of the house. Uh, there's the rest of the elevations here. Um, Material-wise, uh, it's a um, commonly approved materials like uh, parged concrete foundation, uh, cement fiberboard siding, asphalt shingle roof, all of these are appropriate. Staff would ask to approve uh, window and door selections prior to construction or installation. Um, and just summing up, while the, the, the ridge rays and the insets in the first story are appropriate, staff finds the scale of the upper story is not appropriate uh, because it's not subordinate to the house. Staff recommends approval of the proposed addition with the following conditions, that the width of the upper story shall be reduced to sit two feet inside the silhouette of the historic house, that the, uh, the staff shall approve the roof color and that staff shall approve window and door selections. Meeting those conditions, staff finds this application meets the guidelines for the Belmont Hillsboro Neighborhood Conservation Zoning Overlay. Okay, any questions for Sean at the moment? Okay, is the applicant here? Okay, please come forward and state your name and address. Good afternoon, Tyler Lamarinell. Allard Ward Architects at 1618 16th Avenue South. Uh, this this house, um, I know there's some concerns about that mass in the back, um, and it's been referred to as two-story uh, a couple times, and it's definitely somewhere in between uh, to get some height in that upper story that's usable. Um, there is an existing second story, but it's seven foot ceilings now. So we're just gonna kind of maintain what we can of the seven feet. Uh, we're trying to get up to a, a, a nicer ceiling in the addition, uh, which makes sense for the family that wants to move in here. Um, and so we've still kind of kept it down at a knee wall condition. Um, I think we've got a four foot knee wall. So it's really not a full second story. It literally is this tall. Um, and the concern about it matching the width of the bay on the side, I understand that it's a one-story, non-conforming addition on the side. It is prior to the overlay, it's still an old addition, um, and we've been able to match that width in, in past, but maybe not with a second story, so I understand where he's coming from with that. Um, and I would say, yes, we probably could take the two feet um, out of that screen porch and the upstairs to accommodate that two foot uh, to match the uh, width of the original form of the house, and that makes sense to me. Um, what doesn't make sense is to take a gabled wall, like you see in the elevations there, 
and step it back two feet below the story below is really going to turn it into kind of a Frankenstein looking form. Um, structurally, it's not the way things should be built. Uh, it creates very big challenges structurally. Um, it's a waterproofing. I mean, it's it's all these things compounding. It's why we don't see buildings that have a gabled form step back on top of the story below. It just doesn't make sense. Um, and we've never had to do that before. And from my research, looking at the guidelines, there's nothing in the guidelines that says a second story has to be stepped in anything. We've always been able to match the outside walls, if we call it a second story, uh, because we have already hyphenated the central portion to allow for us to come back out and match the width. That's how every house and, you know, I, I may go out on a limb and say that our firm might do more old houses in, in Nashville than maybe any firm. Uh, so this is the common practice is to step the house in, go back a certain distance and step it back out and try to match that width, which is what we've done here. Um, I've got some notes I'd, I'd like to look at too, if you don't mind. Um, the other thing that's really difficult about this house um, is it's on a really short lot. Most lots in Belmont Hillsborough neighborhood are 150, 180 feet deep. Uh, this one is 119 feet deep, so it's short, a short lot. And then most of the lots on this block are 62 and a half feet wide. This particular lot is one of two on the block that are 50 feet wide. So we've kind of got these challenges on this site to create what mass we can without taking up all the yard. So anything that I have to cut in to keep the roof down, which I thought we did a pretty good job with the knee walls, um, may have to go back more, and we're trying to not get too far back so that we can preserve some yard. Um, other thing that's kind of concerning to me is we looked at these elevations two months ago in a meeting with historic staff, and they saw all this and said, this, this looks good, keep going. Uh, so we kept going, um, and we have all that documented. Um, you know, it was just a little different than what we were told originally. So we had proceeded with designing this addition in the hopes that we would uh, be headed in the right direction based on staff's feedback. Uh, they told us we were, and here we are with the exact same elevations, and we're told that it's a different rule, and nobody can point to the guideline that tells me I have to step a, a second story or a story and a half in an additional two feet from the floor below. Um, it. it the, the guidelines just don't read that way. I can't find it anywhere in there. And I went back and reread them again to make sure. Um, so, um, you know, I think uh, Sean had reviewed this house uh, with us and did the staff recommendation. Um, I think it's easy enough for us to pull that side wall in because I think that makes sense and it's the best thing for the house since that non-conforming addition's there. But the additional two feet beyond that on each side uh, I can't find that in the guidelines. It seems like a little bit overkill. We've hidden the house behind the original silhouette. Uh, I think it's uh, it, it looks nicer than what the alternative being proposed is um, in terms of what the neighborhood uh, would like to see. Uh, its neighbor next to it is very tall, big, real two-story, uh, two and a half if we're talking about it uh, in half stories. So uh, we think we've done a good job. Like I said, we would concede to that two feet in on one side, um, but we would like that um, other condition of stepping in an additional two feet uh, taken off. We don't think that's in the guidelines, and we think we've created something that meets the guidelines just as they're written. We're not asking for anything special. Thank you. Um, stay just for a second, please. Yes, and does anyone have any questions for the applicant at the moment? Hmm? Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank for, you. Um, well, we might ask you back. Um, we open public hearing. Anyone here to speak on this project? All right. None. And we're closing public hearing. Discussion, commissioners. Sean, can you go back through, you know, the part of it that deals with this particular area in question? 
part of the application or uh, the, the the guidelines that address this area and how it works well it it's not something that's specified in the guidelines because the guidelines say that additions should be compatible and subordinate and differentiated. Uh, and they don't specify something like that a, a second story needs to step in. It says the addition should be subordinate. I mean, I remember 10 years ago at this commission when additions always stepped in and then stayed in, and then there was kind of like, well, if I do a one-story addition and I go back with an alcove and then con I can come back, or may I come back out and, and match the width, and that was approved uh, and approved again, and essentially, eventually it became the norm, uh, so that, that, you know, additions having an alcove but matching the width is, is now pretty much routine um, for, for additions and, and often even staff approval. Um, and then, you know, over time that, that envelope or that boundary has gotten pushed so that it's now two stories addition, or, you know, two-story additions and two-story additions just just as other additions had always set in two feet and 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 not stepped back out but then you know over time that sort of firm precedent just gets eroded um, and it's not because there's something that is or is not specified in the guidelines um, it's just you know the norm or what's always approved or what's frequently been approved um, you know, as it eventually migrates. So here we are, I, I mean, I look at a, a two-story addition on a one-story house and think two-story additions need to step in. Um, in the staff recommendation, I said that the second story should be stepped in. Um, years ago, it might have been that the entire addition should be stepped in. Um, and that could be done here as well. Um, you don't have to step in the entire addition. Um, in fact, there was a, a case on the consent agenda today, 2121 Blair Boulevard, <clears throat> two-story addition to a one-story house came in originally very much like this in form, where it had an alcove and then stepped back out and then conversations with the applicant, they kept it essentially a two-story addition uh, to a one-and-a-half-story house. That one had a little bit more uh, upper story. Um, two-story addition, but then one-story bay on each side that pops back out. And, and something like that is perhaps what what this would look like if they were to step in the upper story only. I got another application today just dropped off by an architect that would be the same thing, a two-story addition to a one-story house. I worry that that's becoming the new norm, the new, you know, what everybody wants to submit or what everybody wants to build. And... Uh, it's not something that's specified as, as being prohibited by the guidelines, but just the intent of the guidelines and the, the broader language that says additions should be subordinate. That's where, that's where my thinking was in, in making that analysis. So I do have a question on that. So I know you said back in the day we would have, we, it could have been possible they would have said just set that whole thing, you know, the whole section two foot back. To, and I can understand architecturally with an overhang like that is is not desirable. Um, so why would not that recommendation have been made this time as well? Well, like I said, it's it's some of those precedents that aren't as firm as they used to be, or it's a new precedent or a, a different than it was. It's just evolved so that, um, you know, in addition with an alcove that comes back out to match the width of the the building is... It, it essentially it has become routine for the for us for this commission um, that you know other cities probably do it differently but but certainly you know the historic zoning commission neighbors in overlays uh, and and so on have become certainly comfortable with that it's not something we're getting pushed back from or um, have the, gotten pushed back from the commission on uh, in our recommendations. <clears throat> And also, I think that generally, when we see a one or one half story, that that two story, perceived two story, does become more the mass and the scaling and um, questionable that it, it does overshadow the historical. So I think that's just a general thought. Am, are we? Am I right on? Uh, that's that's, and that's our what concern. I've seen. You know, in terms of when we've done that, we've we've not normally approve that. Um, any, yeah, David. Sean, could you speak to the 
design issue uh, that the architect brought up about how you would make it work to step in on the second floor and how it would tie in in terms of design and drainage and roof type on the first floor? <coughs> uh, well, you know, if you're looking at the north elevation, which is the rear, and you were to just step in the, uh, the upper story, uh, and not do anything to the first story, then, you know, obviously you'd have an, an awkward transition there. Um, that's not to be, not to say that you, there aren't, aren't ways that could be addressed. You don't just have to have, you know, a, a shelf there. It can be, um, you know, hipped or, or gabled or, or uh, you know, something else that maybe even, you know, instead of making the upper story narrower, uh, just a re reorientation of the gables or something. You know, there are all sorts of possibilities. I guess I could go on forever. <laughs> um, we're sort of just saying this one particular iteration is the one that we're recommending be revised. Caitlin, any comments from you? Sean, can you uh, go back to the illustration of the where you've called out the massing overlay. So the first story, um, let's see if I can highlight it. So this here, this area is the existing, uh, and then both sides, um, the addition steps in, goes back, and then steps back out to match the width. And this is the side where it's matching a non-original portion. Um, it does the same thing here. It's a little harder to see because of the, the stoop, but it steps in and goes back. Um, the upper story has a, a narrower hyphen, uh, but then steps back out to match uh, the width. So this this wall here, uh, these windows here, are uh, in the same plane as this, which is t two feet out um, outside of the, the original. Uh, the original wall, which is here. Uh, the other side has a uh, similar, but um, so instead of sticking out wider, this this wall does line up with that wall. I can skip forward to, oops, to that. Yeah, so this two-story wall here is, is in the same plane as this. The other side, it's a little bit wider. Mm-hmm. So the green is showing what, you know, the, a two-story mass that would, if it were to be all uh, stepped in two feet and essentially stay there, um, it would eliminate or cause to be reduced the sections that are and it's shaded red. Um, There's no issues of setbacks on the sides, right? No. How, how far are they from? Right, right and left side setbacks. Six feet on the left, and it's more than 12 on, on the right. LaDonna or Lisbeth? I mean, I'm... I I definitely understand where Sean's coming from, but um, I guess that, I mean, it just looks to me they've, it's, they've made a pretty good effort, you know, of, they've done a good job of keeping it thin at the top, you know, I mean, not thin, but narrower at the top, and it's all, it's mainly inset, and I know it does pop back out to match the non-historic house, but I mean, I don't know, to me, it's reading like it's still subordinate just because the main part of it is is in the inside, you know, it's not all straight back. Um, so, I don't know, I don't. Are you, are you okay with ridge rays? Hmm? Are you okay with the ridge rays? Uh, yes. On this instance, I am. I mean, I think it's just, I mean, for this, that wasn't even an issue for these guidelines, was it? It is. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I guess I'd like to hear everybody else's thoughts on it. Cyril, do you have any other 
I, I agree with Cyril, and uh, I do think this is an example of taking a, a small, modest one, not even really one and a half story house, and, and subsuming it with a, a very large two story addition uh, as you get toward the back. And I, I have concerns with that and tend to agree with staff recommendation. Would you like to make a motion? Yes, I, I would move that uh, with respect to 1512A Dallas Avenue that uh, this commission approve the presented plans with staff recommendations. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. None opposed. Then the recommendation passes. Okay. Um, I believe that concludes our agenda. And we are closing our meeting. Okay. And yes, this is a, yes. <laughs> yes. We have a very short agenda. However, we do have uh, training. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.